What makes us the way we are? You might think that it's your personality or the way you look. Well, yes, but these features are all determined by our DNA. More specifically, the proteins expressed by our DNA throughout our life. Segments of DNA code for proteins that work like puzzle pieces, fitting together to determine things like our eye colour, height, and even how susceptible we are to disease. Since proteins are so important for our daily function, understanding how they are made is an essential tool for drug development, diagnosis techniques, and agriculture. On our genetic timeline, Beadle and Tatum set the foundation that genes produced proteins. Later, the ribosome was then discovered as the protein synthesis factory. From then on, emerged the discovery of tRNA, mRNA, the genetic code, and the wobble hypothesis. We now arrive in the 1970s, and the great mystery of the ribosome still stands. How does it make proteins? Let's briefly recap on what we know about the ribosome currently. We know that it is the small ribosome subunit that anchors the mRNA molecule to begin translation, to synthesize proteins. The start and stop of this process relies on the recognition of designated initiator and terminator codons to signal the binding and release of mRNA. We also know that ribosomes are comprised of both proteins and ribonucleic acid, but the purpose of this rRNA was largely unknown at the time. Scientists Shine and Delgano sought to find a correlation between rRNA and the mechanisms of translation. Their previous studies focused on the three prime terminal sequence of the 18S rRNA molecule in the small ribosome subunit in yeast, Drosophila, and rabbit cells. They found this sequence was highly conserved between the species and seemed to be complementary to known terminator codons. With this in mind, they turned their focus to the 16S rRNA in the 30S ribosomal subunit in E. coli. They sequenced the rRNA through stepwise degradation. A process of labelling and degradation of a single nucleotide was repeated seven times, running the sample through paper electrophoresis between each step. This determined which nitrogenous base was removed. In this way, they were able to determine the three prime terminus to be A, C, C, U, C, C, U, U, A. Now, you may be wondering, why is this such a significant breakthrough? Well, we know that the stop codons for E. coli are UAA, UAG, and UGA. Therefore, the sequence in the rRNA can interact with the codon UAA as well as UAG in this domain with third position wobble of uracil. It was also proposed that interactions with UGA may still be possible, predicting that the second position, U to G, shouldn't interfere with the overall recognition of the terminator codon. This aligned with their predictions from their study with eukaryotes. Therefore, it was proposed that the small ribosome subunit is responsible for scanning the mRNA sequence for terminator codons and signaling the binding of terminator factors. Later research inspired by Shine and Dalgano suggested this region of rRNA is also involved in translation initiation. The five prime untranslated region of mRNA for a number of genes had the sequence AGGAGG. This region lies upstream of the AUG start codon and possesses complementation to the Shine Dalgano sequence. Thus, the suggestion came that the Shine Dalgano sequence can play a role in the recognition of mRNA in translation initiation. Remarkably, Shine and Dalgano's work also relates to the bacteria killing mechanism of the antibiotic Colosin E3. It was found that it cleaved the 16S rRNA sequence, inhibiting translation. After exposure to the antibiotic, E. coli cells completely ceased to synthesize proteins. It is incredible how much only nine nucleotides are capable of, and there is still much more to learn about them. Thanks to these two Aussie scientists, 
we have closed the case on the mystery of the ribosome.